What's going on? It's your boy Nick from the Occult Rejects, and I am uh, coming at you with a uh, special episode, I guess, to say. Um, yeah, and really, in my opinion, it is kind of a special episode. I actually think that this is something that um, people should take a look at. I do find this to be very interesting and possibly very important, especially with what's going on today. Um and I'm really hoping people do take a look at this and maybe think about what's really going on. So, in today's episode, let's just get to it. We will be discussing the uh, lesser and greater ritual of the hexagram. And there are uh, two reasons why I want to cover this ritual, basically. Uh, especially because of what's going on right now in the world. Um, the first reason for that <laughs> is uh, obviously, as you can see here, and I will be getting into, there is swastikas and hexagrams involved in this ritual. Especially the hexagram, I find very interesting because, uh, you know, th this symbol has been used for a long, long time. And uh, it didn't become the emblem of the first Zionist Congress until 1897, and then wasn't adopted to the Israeli flag until October 28th, 1948. So I think uh, these symbols go back a lot farther. You know, than maybe a lot of people know. And the second reason I will get to, which I think is uh, equally as important, uh, I will do at the end of the show. So please try to uh, stay with me. Uh, this won't be as long as regular episodes, and try to wait till the end. Um, real quick, I guess to get into it and let's get going. Um, you know, the lesser ritual is used to banish or invoke all planetary energies. The greater ritual would be uh, it would be used to banish or invoke specific planetary energies. When you are using the lesser ritual, it's a little bit different. The greater ritual gets much more specific. Uh, this ritual is very easy to attribute to the Kabbalah and to the Tree of Life. As you can see here on the, uh, on the picture that I'm showing, and I'll make it a little bit bigger. As you can see here on the tree, um, when you start from Sphere 3 and so on, you have planets associated with it. And when it comes to attributing it to the Kabbalah and the spheres, they are associated with at least four other, I guess, levels or depth of understanding to that sphere to begin with. Um, and here are some examples from the third sphere down. And the reason why I'm getting into this again is because it is highly used for planetary magic and stuff with the Kabbalah and planets can be attributed to the Hermetic Kabbalah. So first we will be going with Abina, the God name for that. And again, I'm, I'm going over this because I'm going to try to make a point later on as well. The God name for that is Jehovah Elohim. As many people out there like to say, El is the God of Saturn. You are actually wrong. Uh, the archangel is Zafkiel. The order of angels is the Aralim, or the thrones. And then the planet associated with that is Saturn. So basically you are getting with these spheres, uh, and the best way to like really, I guess, explain it is that you will have the first one, the essence of God of that sphere. Then you will have the orders of angel, uh, the archangels. And then you will have the orders of angels. And then the planet. Now, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, they're also all god names. So as you start going through these planets, Hermes or Toth could be associated with Mercury. 
but yet it's not using the planet name. So even uh, the humanized gods that we have created can be used instead of the planet that we're traditionally used to. And uh, the color for that uh, bina would be black. Then Chesed, the god name of that is El. E-L. Not for Saturn. The archangel is Zadkiel. The order of angels is the brilliant ones of the Chasmalum. And the planet associated with that is Jupiter. And the color, very important, going to go back to it again, blue. And we have Gabor. The god name for that, Elohim Gabor. Archangel Hamiel. Order of angels, the seraphim or the fiery serpents. The planet for that is Mars, and the color for that is red. Then we will move on to Tifereth. The god name for that is Jehovah Aloha, uh, Jehovah Aloha Vadath. I'm screwing it up. The archangel is Raphael, and the order of angels is the Malachim or kings, and the planet is the sun. Then we move on to Netzach. The god name for that is Jehovah Sabaoth. The archangel Aniel. The order of angels, the Elohim, or the gods. And the planet associated with that is Venus, and the color is green. Then as we move across, we go to Hod. The god name Elohim Sabaoth. Archangel Michael. Order of angels, Benai Elohim, the sons of God. Planet Mercury. And the color is orange. And then we have Yesod. God name Shaddai El Kai. Archangel Gabriel. Order of angels, the cherubim, the strong. And the planet associated with that is the moon. And the color is silver. Just wanted to show you that when it comes to the Kabbalistic tree of life, there is all these things that are just associated with that one little sphere. Besides tons and tons of other things. But this is a very basic, you know, just basic example. So, and uh, the ritual will be also, that I'm going to explain, will be covered as it is in Crowley's Liber O. Which, he did not create himself, and took from the order of the Golden Dawn or whatever source they got it from. But he did not write these rituals. They came from somewhere long before him. But what I'm getting at is that I'm going to cover it as it is in that book. And as you can see here on the side, there are, uh, these are symbols that you will make sometimes during ritualistic formulas. And that is included inside Libero because at some point, depending on which ritual you're using out of that, it has the pentagram, the greater and lesser, and it has the hexagram, the greater and lesser. Depending on what ritual you are using, you may be doing different things. And these are the gestures and the signs used in the LVX formula, which is for the hexagram rituals, the LVX formula. And here you see 7, 8, 9, and 10. That was just on that thing that I showed you. That is the LVX signs. Number 7 is Osiris slain, the cross. Number 8 is Isis in mourning, the swastika. And number nine would be Typhon, or you call it a Apophis and Typhon. And that is making the trident. And then the X, which I mean, you know, Elon Musk loves so much, is Osiris Risen or the Pentagram. Now, I'm not going to get into this ritual too, too much. I'm not here to try to teach people how to do it. I am just giving people awareness of what's actually going on in these rituals. 
Now here is, you know, I'll just show you uh, the lesser hexagram ritual, and I will read off what's on here. I do understand that uh, this probably, you can't read it, <laughs> you know, even if you make the screen bigger, whatever. But to make it easier for you, I'm going to read it for you. This ritual is to be is to be performed after the lesser ritual of the pentagram. Because the lesser ritual, the lesser or greater ritual of the hexagram is dealing with planetary energies. In magic, ceremonial magic, you should probably do the pentagram ritual because that is dealing with all the earthly energies. If you're going to want to contact energies greater than that, you're going to have to banish the ones here in this realm to move up to higher things. So you would remove all the energies in this, you know, world before you start contacting other ones. In some ways, people like to say it, it is cleaning off your plate or having a clean slate, removing everything and erasing everything off the board and starting all over again to create what you want. So this ritual is to be performed after the lesser ritual of the pentagram. And this is the lesser hexagram. The lesser hexagram, in my opinion, is really more for banishing um, banishing those energies so then you can invoke one specific one, or you could just be asking to actually invoke all of them. It works both ways, invocation and banishing. All right, getting into it. You will stand upright, feet together, left arm at the side, and your right across the body. So you're going to hold your right hand, basically right here at your chest, holding the wand or other weapon upright in the median line. Then you're going to face the east and say, I-N-R-I. And some people do draw that out with their wand as they're saying that sometimes. I-N-R-I. Yod, Nun, Resh, Yod. Virgo, Isis, Mighty Mother. Scorpio, Apophis, Destroyer. Soul, Osiris, Osiris, Slain and Risen. Isis, Apophis, Osiris. And then you will go E, A, O. At that point, you will extend your arms like I was just showing in the previous slide. You will extend the arms in the form of a cross and say the sign of Osiris slain. Then raise the right arm to point upwards, keeping the elbow square, and lower the left arm to point downwards, keeping the elbow square, while turning the head over the left shoulder, looking down so that the eyes follow the left forearm and say the sign of the morning of Isis, which again is the swastika. And fun fact, could be true, could be false, so maybe it's not a fun fact, fun theory. Supposedly Crowley gave Churchill number nine, the symbol for number nine, to defeat the symbol in number eight. Crowley said that symbol will defeat the swastika. Very interesting. So, yes, you will make the sign of a swastika in saying the sign of the morning of Isis. Then raise the arm at an angle of 60 degrees to each, uh, to each other above the head, which then your head is thrown back, and you will say the sign of Apophis and Typhon. Cross the arms of, on the breast and bow the head and say the sign of Osiris risen. And then you will begin to draw the hexagram. With the magical weapon, trace the hexagram, I'm just saying for the first one, of fire in the east, saying Ararita, which is Aleph, Resh, Aleph, Resh, Yod, Tor, Aleph. This word consists of the initials of a sentence, which means one is his beginning, 
One is his individuality, his permutation is one. So that was just the lesser hexagram ritual. I know if you want to, you know, be technical about it, you're only seeing one hexagram, even though you're taking the two triangles that are used to make the hexagram and making different designs with them. But uh, let's get to the uh, greater hexagram. Huh. Greater hexagram ritual. This, again, is more specific and deals with specific planetary en energies. This ritual also starts off with the formula I just explained, but you will draw different symbols. Basically, what I'm saying is that whole LVX thing, the whole movements, the swastika, the peace sign, and all that, you are going to do all that as if you were doing the lesser hexagram ritual. But then uh, you will draw different symbols. Now, at this point, you are drawing full hexagrams. And depending on which planet or sphere that you are working with again, and if you are banishing or invoking, you will start to draw it in different areas in different directions. As you can see on this slide that I am showing right now, the invoking, you see, you will start to the right. The banishing, I'm saying with the top one, which is Saturn, you will start drawing it to the left. And then if you wanted to do Jupiter, you were going to start drawing at a different corner of the triangle. The sun, which is a wild one because there's only six points, that one is in the middle, and you are going to have to draw that hexagram and every single possibility that you see on the screen above it and below it. Again, I'm showing you here the hexagram. It has the sun in the middle, which is why I was just explaining you have to do that one. And then uh, we have the unicursal hexagram that uh, Crowley used. And a little fun fact for people out there. Crowley didn't come up with that either. He took that from someone else. That one will cross the sun in the middle, as you see, because the lines are crossing. The interesting thing about that that I do want to add is that if you were to look at the tree of life, and maybe I'll go back to that real quick. If you look at that tree of life again, if you are doing it in the unicursal hexagram, you are making the crosses that you actually see going through the sun that you do not see in the Star of David. And I do think that is kind of why Crowley eventually had his own rituals that kind of use the unicursal hexagram instead, or some people will suggest using the unicursal hexagram instead of this regular one. Just throwing in some of that extra stuff. So once you are done drawing all of these things too, then you will also draw, depending on what you're dealing with, you can either draw the sigil of that planet, or you can draw the zodiac that is associated with that planet. So now again, we can actually be getting into different things. Before I was saying planetary magic, which yes, it's associated with planetary magic, but now you can start getting into zodiacal stuff. Or it can be even just associated with that sphere on the tree of life. There are countless things that you could actually be doing in this ritual. So... The first reason I wanted to cover this, like I said before, is because we have a magical ritual that is used a lot in ceremonial magic. And it is literally using something that is now used by the Nazis. Regardless of which way that thing is spinning, it has been an occult symbol prior to them. And in this ritual, now you have the hexagram. Which, you know, a lot of people out there nowadays are at least coming out and saying that it's not the Star of David. Where are you getting that from? But this symbol has been used for a long, long, long time in magic. I am going to be covering an episode that shows grimoires. And you have books from 13, 1400s that are showing hexagrams in it way before it was ever used by the, you know, the Israelis on their flag and th that other thing I mentioned before, I already forgot. But, I mean, this symbol, and, and in my opinion, 
from what I said before, you need to start off with the pentagram ritual first, and then when you want to move on to bigger and better things, you're going to use the hexagram. That hexagram is much more powerful than the pentagram. You are contacting much more powerful energies with that thing. So I find it very interesting that in this ritual, we are seeing both symbols that are being thrown around a lot right now. And they've been thrown around a lot for a long time. And we're going to go back, we take a look, and go look at that blue sphere again. That blue sphere on the tree that is you know, associated with Chesed or Jupiter. It's God name. From what I said before, contrary to what people like to say about Saturn, the God name is L. The blue sphere God name is L. Is Ra L in a blue hexagram? Just think about this for a minute and realize what I have just shown people or shown you. Could this all be one act of magic in a ritual? Seems very, very suspect to me. And now, really, Guess I'm kind of done on that. I just want to show that there is something up with these symbols being used within the same magical ritual and part of a formula, a magical formula. Now, the second reason that I wanted to get into this, and, and I really hope people don't shut this off, and I, I mean this, I really do mean this in the nicest, nicest way. If you are a contact, a content creator, and you are a podcaster, it may not necessarily be for you, but please do not shut this off yet. And I am going to apologize as well to most of my listeners and the people watching, watching and listening to this video, because I honestly don't believe that this really applies to most of you. But for the people on social media and in the truth or conspiracy community, this message is for you. And again, this message is not out of hate. Believe me. I, I know sometimes I can get heated because I'm actually just getting upset with the situation. And hate is such a strong, useless energy to waste. But I, I, this does not come out of, of hate jealousy, and malice. This is because I genuinely, for real, care about humanity or care for humanity and where we are headed. Because in actuality, we are becoming much, much more ignorant to this stuff under the, under the disguise of being educated. I, it's for real, straight up. And unfortunately, there are a lot of you, especially with a mic and a camera, that I guarantee have no idea about this ritual and probably have no idea what the LVX formula is. And probably you don't know what the, the yad heh vad -Hey formula is. And I guarantee you probably don't know what the NOX Knox formula is. Most of you, unfortunately, have never even picked up a book about this stuff ever. More than likely, your knowledge of occultism has come from a meme or social media post from someone else that doesn't know what they're talking about, unfortunately. I have seen prior to me starting my podcast, which is another reason why I started it, it's because I have seen this going on beforehand, and I hate to say it, I don't know if it's, I do think it's gotten worse, I don't know if it's maybe because I've gotten involved in the podcasting community and maybe I paid attention a little bit more. And, uh, I, you know, but I, I do think it is, unfortunately, getting worse. And uh, there is, you know, what I was saying, there is, a, and unfortunately, there is a lot of podcasters. A lot of podcasters now. 
that have never once stepped into the magical ring. You have never once practiced any of this stuff. And you have legit no theory on how this stuff works. You have never had a real magical experience. In reality, all you are doing is passing off completely wrong info and understanding about occultism, symbolism, and what magic really is. You are literally doing a disservice to humanity. You know, that's my opinion. And uh, it sucks. It really sucks to watch. <laughs> and when people want to say, well, it's giving awareness, I actually beg to differ on that. I truly, truly do beg to differ on that. Because this is my opinion. When people want to say it's giving awareness, and that awareness is inaccurate, it is basically a lie now. Making people believe a lie is exactly what black magic is all about. You are controlling people's thoughts with other bullshit. And basically... Convincing people of lies is exactly what Nazism is all about in its occult roots. We are being shown footage, video, and sound that is not showing us the truth. Hence, why the Nazi battalion Azov was feeding the United States so much footage about what's going on in Ukraine, why they wave their flags with a swastika on it. At some point, there is a magician bullshitting and spreading lies. I could literally start running off countless names, rituals, books, orders, etc., and these content creators that have zero idea about this stuff have somehow become authorities on this topic. That really needs to stop. But things are just going to get worse and worse because we are literally heading farther from the truth of what this stuff really is and about. I understand. Believe me. Just from the past, I don't know so much about fame, but from the past, I knew how much money meant to me. But I know the fame and the money is very enticing and addictive. I understand from myself in the past, when I was faced with something that scared me, and I didn't understand... I'll take whatever childish comic book Disney idea I can make up to feel better and think I understand what I'm looking at when I don't. That's a problem. Huge, huge problem. But for real, for real... You need to find a different way to accomplish fame and money in your life without talking about occultism that you know nothing at all about. For real. You know, as you can see, I'm not getting excited. I'm not yelling. I'm not pointing out names. I'm being straight up legit for real right now. You know, and I'm never going to point out the names or this and that. But there is tons and tons and tons of people that think they are the authorities of this stuff. They have their names are huge. 
They're all over the place, and they know jack shit. I hate to say it. You got people out there breaking down the help symbol from uh, the Beatles. Completely wrong. Please. Find a different thing. Find a different hobby. Find a different topic. Go out and get a different job that pays you more. So you stop doing this for money or whatever it is. But please. If you have not stepped into the ring. If you are an armchair magician. Which basically means you have done nothing. And if you haven't even read any... That's another problem, too. You, I read a Manly P. Hall book, and now I know everything. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's Stop. This has to stop. People are getting dumber. People are getting very, very ignorant to what's going on around them. We are living in a ritual. We are living in magic. And people are coming up with these fantastical ideas of what's really going on because they're scared. And I understand. It's scary days. Stop being scared. And maybe actually start thinking instead. So that is enough out of me. Again, I wanted to cover this because of what's going on in the world. Swastikas and hexagrams is all over that, that ritual. And I think people should pay attention to that and maybe think something else is really going on right now because you have a lot of people controlled and their emotions over something that they actually don't know anything about. Unless you're over where this stuff happens, you don't know what's going on except for what the news is telling you. That's magic in a sense. And I can tell you right now there's a lot of lies. Coming out of that TV. So in my opinion, it's all black magic. So I, I, I thought that this was very important maybe during the, the times right now to see, you know, what's going on with this ritual and the symbolism. And again, I'm sure that there are, if, if any other podcasters or content creators happen to listen to this, maybe you'll realize you actually have no idea about any of the stuff I just mentioned. And maybe you'll take a back seat when it comes to telling everybody what's going on when it comes to occultism and magic. Because uh, bullshit is being considered gospel. And it sucks. It really sucks. At times, I actually feel like just stopping my show. What's the fucking point? People would rather believe a Marvel comic book explanation than the truth. But there's still hope. We're still alive. And uh, I don't want to quit. I'm not a quitter. So I'm going to keep going. But uh, that is the end of this, I guess, you know, special extra episode. Again, this is not out of malice. This is not out of hate. This is not out of jealousy. I love what I do. And I could actually give two flying craps about the numbers. But what sucks is seeing people of authority spreading disinformation with magic. It's a huge problem. In my opinion, it's almost a pandemic at this point. So hopefully, uh, maybe people heard a little bit of what I had to say. And that is the end of another, uh, I guess, you know, NY Patriot episode, Colt Rejects episode, who knows, solo by myself. That is the end of my mouth for this episode. Uh, the links for uh, all my other shows will be in the bottom. And I truly, again, like, I, I truly did not mean this in any vicious way. This is all out of care and concern. And I really hope people got something out of this. And uh, until the next one, I wish you all well. Later.